G'day legends, James Granger from Emerging Leaders Foundation here. Just came out of the bush last week with uh, five amazing guys. Um, and I always know when blokes turn up at a campfire, or my campfire, there's going to be common themes coming from it. And this time was no different. It's like, you know, you get people coming from all around the place, doing different things, supposedly in their daily life, and yet these common underlying tones happen. And the three major things were control, trust and commitment and each one of them had their own issues with these things. Now, whenever control turns up, you're gonna find trust is there as well because the more you wanna control and need to control, the less you trust. The more you trust, the less you need to control. So it's this dance between the two. Now, the underlying pinning, the, the underpinning thing, a factor is emotional literacy because you'll control when you actually need to fear. Fear is linked to control. Um, yeah, sure, trust. Trust is, is more linked to certainty or love, but at the same time, you can transcend both to this place of knowing. And anyone who's been in a situation before where they'll do something or they'll be in a situation and they'll just say, don't ask me why I did it, I just knew I had to do it. That's, that's the place where you transcend both the, the issues of trust and control. But the biggest massive thing that was going on for all of them was commitment. And I watched it. And I watched them develop all these stories as to why they couldn't commit, why they couldn't allow themselves the possibility to actually live life in a different way. And to their absolute amazing credit, each one of them allowed themselves to varying degrees to drop through those stories and feel the underpinning emotion which was holding them stuck, release that and then rewrite their own story. And that might sound really simplistic. Well, yeah, sure, <laughs> some of them were in it for hours. But at the same time, that's the pattern that has to require. That is literally the formula. Commit to being a better version of yourself. Commit to letting go of the need to feel pain. Commit to letting go of the narrative which locks you into the life that you currently don't actually like. And there's so much commitment there. Like in relationships where you really need to own the fact that you and your partner are actually in, have been in hibernation or a hiatus and and basically you're treading water. And you're basically telling each other that now we just have to get through the rest of our life, maybe until the kids leave the home. And there's an incredible divorce rate when people leave, when the kids leave the home. Because they wake up and go, who the hell are you? Because they've lost sight of who they really are themselves. So it's, it's owning that you might not be fulfilled in your relationship and then allowing yourself to realize fulfillment's an inside job, but I can actually do it with this other person when, when she or he wants to actually go on that journey with me. And then all of a sudden, watch your marriage completely change. Your job, it's exactly the same thing. If you're just working for coin, then you have very little resilience. And I found this out in the middle of a war zone when we got in a bit of strife and my driver gets out and just goes, boss, I didn't sign up for this. Now I scratched my head being a... Uh, Army commander, and I'm going, I'm sure somewhere in the bloody writing of your uh, enlistment papers, it said, you're joining the army, man. You might actually have to shoot someone or you might get shot at. I couldn't understand it, but then I looked him in the eye and I realised he was there for coin. He was there for the money. And I realised there was a lot of them the same. And that created a lot of dynamics that were uh, hard to navigate. Because when bullets and bombs fly, in other words, when you really had to find the metal inside you, you really had to dig deep inside you, money is not a good motivator. It is not a good motivator. Now, sure, we have supplanted our God for money. We've basically given away all the things we used to give to a, a higher power than ourselves, and we've given it to money. Money controls us. This is now authority in life, and I, I guarantee you, you know, just have a, a think of the little narratives we run. One, money doesn't grow on trees. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then money rules your next step in life. Allow yourself to let go of that. Commit to realizing you are bigger than simply a transaction. Your beingness is amazing. It is not your doingness which counts. And in society, what we've done is we've transposed our value as a person onto our doingness, not into our beingness. And that is a narrative which you can let go anytime you choose. And when you do let that go, holy cow, your life will just turn a page because you will realize when you simply turn up in your relationship with your kids at work, when you really turn up and you are really present, your beingness is enough. If it's not, then you're in the wrong environment. Full stop. So let go of control. Understand where trust lies for you and where it doesn't lie for you. 
transcend to this new place of knowing. But how do I do that? I commit to the work inside. I commit to owning my shit. I commit to an, a, just, just allowing a narrative that no longer serves me to dissolve in front of my face so that I can recreate a new script. Something amazing for myself. And if it's something amazing for myself, then watch every other person who I truly love benefit from that expression. I'm a first-hand example of that. Trust you got something from it. By the way, gents, you ready for a bush experience around my campfire? It's a bit of an enjoyable experience. Just ask anyone who's been there. Four days in November. Get in touch with me, personal message me. Love you long time. Bye. Thank you.